the original release date of the final shape is already behind us, and while the three month delay isn't ideal, it does give us time to farm out our god rolls and prepare for the next day one raid. That's why I've compiled a list of the three most important legendary weapons to farm right now, all of which are extremely powerful non-craftable options that every guardian should have in their arsenal. I'm above, and if you enjoyed today's video, a like and subscription would be greatly appreciated. But before we dive in, I want to thank Caliber for sponsoring today's video. Caliber is a free-to-play tactical third-person shooter that emphasizes teamwork and strategy. Think of it as a mix between Battlefield, Counter-Strike, and DMZ from Call of Duty all rolled into one. There's something for everyone with Caliber, including PvP for competitive experiences, PvE for those looking to team up and play with friends more casually, or PvPvE for game modes that give you a mixture of both. The gameplay feels great, and I love the amount of tactical choice that you have with more than 70 different operators at your disposal. And the best part is that the developers are committed to regularly updating their game based on community feedback to make our experience as fun as possible. So what are you waiting for? Download Caliber now and play for free using my link down in the description below. Thank you again to Caliber for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back to the list. The first weapon we'll be showcasing today is the Wilderflight, a breech loading grenade launcher from Spire of the Watcher. This one may come as a bit of a surprise to some of you, but it's actually one of the most unique weapons in the game right now. Wilderflight's intrinsic perk, Double Fire, fires two grenade projectiles instead of just one. This means that it deals 30% more damage than a standard grenade launcher, and at the time of this recording, it's the only GL in the game that can do this. With that said, we do have a brand new Double Fire GL called the Wild Style coming in the patch on March 5th that will be a direct competitor to the Wilderflight. This weapon will be much easier to farm as it comes from Grandmaster Nightfalls, but as always, the perks will make or break this weapon, so we'll have to see whether or not the Wild Style is actually worth farming for when it drops next week. Now, these higher damage archetypes typically have some sort of trade-off in the rate of fire, handling, or reload departments, but double fire GLs don't really suffer from any downsides. The Wilder Flight feels fantastic to use and has outstanding perks to help supplement bait and switch damage rotations with auto-loading in column three and either Vorpal Weapon or Frenzy in column four. Believe it or not, three of these GL shots are equivalent to the damage of an extra bait and switch rocket and have helped secure some of the fast boss bakes ever recorded. And if you're looking for utility, this GL also comes with disorienting grenades to help you get through some of the toughest endgame content. Some of you may remember just how powerful blinding grenades were a few years ago before their damage nerfs, and the added damage from the double fire archetype pretty much reverts that, making it feel incredible to use. As for the farm itself, this weapon only drops from Percy's, the final boss encounter in Spire of the Watcher. Now the unfortunate part is that due to the weekly featured dungeon rotator, you only have two more chances to truly farm this encounter repeatedly before the final shape, which will occur during the weeks of March 12th and April 30th. So if the wildfire's perk pool isn't the best, I recommend marking your calendars to snag yourself a god roll. We can usually farm this encounter in about two minutes, with the ideal team comp being a tether with Orpheus Riggs and Mobius Quiver to extend the debuff on the boss, a well with Apotheosis Veil for a safe DPS strategy and high damage from your fusion grenades, and any other damage super of your choosing. Rockets do extremely well here, and I also recommend using Lumina for an even higher damage bonus to speed up your farms. If you aren't stressed about one phasing, your damage options open up significantly and becomes an extremely chill five minute farm. But as you can see, you can absolutely one phase this boss no problem. Our next weapon comes from Ghosts of the Deep, which was actually supposed to be the farmable dungeon this week, but has been changed in favor of Prophecy due to the loot refresh happening on March 5th. The Cold Comfort Rocket Launcher is widely regarded as the best rocket in Destiny, topping even the likes of Apex Predator and Crux Termination due to its unique combination of ammo capacity and DPS potential. In Column 3, we have Envious Assassin, which will be nerfed slightly on March 5th to overflow the magazine to two rockets after 
after securing kills with other weapons. And in column 4, we have Bait and Switch, which will provide a 30% damage bonus after the nerfs on March 5th as well. Despite these changes, this rocket will still remain best in slot due to the synergy these perks have with the Ghost of the Deep Origin trait. Restoration Ritual states that reviving allies or defeating combatants with finishers reloads this weapon and readies an emergency ammo refill for the next time this weapon runs out of ammo. After the nerfs, comboing this with Envious Assassin will allow you to fire three consecutive rockets without reloading, something that can only be done with reconstruction and bipod on other rockets. The fact that you can do this while having a 30% damage perk active makes this rocket best in slot, which is why Cold Comfort is so highly regarded. Though every encounter can drop this weapon, I'd recommend farming Ekthar for maximum efficiency as it's not only the fastest encounter to farm, it also has the smallest pool of possible drops. The goal here is to get through each run as quickly as possible, so for an easy boss bake, simply run three Banner of War Titans for a free kill. But if you're not comfortable doing that, you can also use Arbalist to instantly pop the boss's shield and use rockets or go with something like Acrius that can one phase the boss as well. For our final weapon, we're staying in the heavy slot, but moving to everyone's favorite game mode, Trials of Osiris. I'm obviously joking because I know this is a PvE focused channel and that people typically despise going into PvP to farm PvE god rolls, but in this case, the weapon is so good that I just can't leave it off the list. The Cataphract GL3 is a heavy grenade launcher that can roll with Envious Assassin in Column 1 and Bait and Switch in Column 2, and after hearing about the Cold Comfort, you've probably caught on to why this perk combination is so strong right now. These perks make it one of the best burst damage heavy weapons in the game, with Envious overflowing the mag to 14 shots with Augmented Drum, with all of them being buffed by Bait and Switch for extremely high burst damage. Many people think that GLs are getting nerfed with the patch on March 5th, but they're actually receiving a substantial buff that makes them even more desirable. First off, grenade launchers will get a reserve ammo increase, ranging anywhere from 6 to 10 rounds depending on the archetype. They were already great for burst damage, and now they'll be much better for total damage as well. The other big change revolves around spike grenades, as they're reducing the damage buff spike provides from 50% all the way down to 12.5%. Now, this may sound like a lot, but they're also increasing the direct impact damage of all heavy grenade launchers by 10% and their detonation damage by 5% to compensate for this change. So overall, GLs are getting much better with spike grenades no longer being the only viable perk. And the main reason I'm recommending this weapon is because the Trials changes coming on March 5th will make these weapons more accessible than they've ever been. You currently have a 50% chance to get a Trials weapon on any match win, and this is being updated to exclusively drop the weekly weapon. This means that when the Cataphract is the flawless reward, you'll have a 50% chance to earn one on any win. We're also seeing the introduction of a brand new card known as the Passage of Persistence, which gives you the weekly a version of this weapon at 7 wins on the card without ever letting you flaw the card itself. Unlike other passages, a loss will simply remove a win, with two consecutive losses doing nothing to your progress. This means that any time you secure two wins in a row, your card will permanently keep that win no matter what, instead of having to win 7 straight games for flawless. And if that wasn't enough, Bungie is also increasing rewards for three-person fire teams, where you'll get an additional 50% chance at the non-adept Trials weapon and a 50% chance to get a Trials engram and bonus Trials reputation, all coming from match completions. Now listen, I rarely play PvP, but I will absolutely be diving into the playlist to farm out my Cataphract. Well guys, that concludes the three most important weapons to farm leading up to the final shape. I want to give a quick honorable mention to the Warden's Law for our lucky pants hunters out there, as it is absolutely insane when set up correctly, albeit a bit more niche than the other three weapons on this list. But if you're interested, I'll have my top three hunter builds video linked down in the description below for those who want to dive into that further. Thank you again to Caliber for sponsoring today's video, and remember that you can download the game for free right now using my link down below. Anyways guys, that's it from me. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll catch you next time. Peace!